I'm architects. I'm only architect in the world making buildings out of paper, like this cardboard tube. And this exhibition is the first one I did using paper tube. 1986, much, much longer before people start talking about ecological issues and environmental issues. I just started testing the paper tube in order to use this as a building structure. It's very complicated to test the, the, the new material for the building, but this was much stronger than I expected, and also it's very easy to waterproof, and also the, because it's industrial material, it's also possible to fireproof. Then I built the temporary structure. 1990, this is the first temporary building out of paper. Uh, there are 330 tubes uh, diameter is 55. There are only 12 tubes diameter is 120 centimeters, four feet wide as you see in the photo, inside the toilet. In case you finish with toilet paper, you can tear off the inside wall. <laughs> so it's very useful. Year 2000, uh, there is a big expo in Germany. Uh, I was asked to design the building because of the theme of the expo was the environmental issue. So I was chosen to build uh, the pavilion out of paper tube, recyclable paper. But my goal of the design is not when it's completed. My goal was when building was demolished, because the, uh, the, the, we each country make a lot of pavilions, but after half a year, we create a lot of industrial waste. So my building has to be reused or re recycled after the, the building was recycled. So that was the goal of my, my, my design. Then I was very lucky to win the competition of building second Pompidou Center in France, in the city of Metz. Because I was so poor, I wanted to rent the office in Paris, but I couldn't afford. So I decided to bring my student to Paris to build our office on top of the Pompidou Center in Paris by ourselves. <laughs> so we brought the paper tube and the wooden joint to complete the 35 meter long office. We stayed there for six years without paying any rent. <laughs> but I had a one, uh, thank you. I had a one big problem. Because we are part of the exhibition, even my friend want to see me, they had to buy a ticket to see me. That was the problem. <laughs> then I completed the Pompidou Center in Metz. It's a very popular museum now, and I created a big monument for the government. But then I was very disappointed at the, my profession as an architect, because we are not helping, we are not working for society, but we are working for privileged people. Rich people, government, developers, they have money and power. Those are invisible. So they hire us to visualize their power and money by making monumental architecture. That's our profession. Even historically the same, even now we are same, doing the same. So I was very disappointed. We are not working for society. Even there the, the, the also many people who lost their houses by natural disaster. But I must say they are no longer a natural disaster. For example, earthquake never kill people, but collapse of the building kill people. That's responsibility of architects. Then people need some temporary housing, but there are no architects working there because we are too busy working for privileged people. So I thought even us as architects who can involve in the reconstruction of the, uh, the temporary housing, we can make it better. So that is why I started working in disaster area. 1994, there was a big disaster in Rwanda, Africa. Two tribes, Hutu and Tutsi, fight each other. Over two million people became refugees. But I was so surprised to see the shelter, refugee camp, uh, organized by UN. They are so poor. And uh, they are freezing with blanket during rainy season. And the, the shelter built by UN, they just provide them plastic sheet and the refugee has to cut the trees, and uh, just like this. But over two million people cut trees, this become big, heavy deforestation and environmental problem. That is why they start providing aluminum pipe, but aluminum barrels, very expensive, they sold them out for money, then cutting trees again. So I proposed my idea to improve the situation using just recycled paper tube, because this is so cheap and also so strong. But my budget is only 50 US dollars per unit. We built 50 units to do the, the, some monitoring test for the, the, the durability and the, uh, moisture and termite so on. And then year after 1995, in Kobe, Japan, we had a big earthquake. Nearly 7,000 people were killed. 
and the city like this uh, Nagata district, the, all the city was burned fire after the earthquake. And also I found out that many Vietnamese refugees suffering and gathering as Catholic church, all the buildings were totally destroyed. So I went to there to, and also I proposed to priest, why don't we rebuild the church out of paper tube? And he said, Ahokat, are you crazy? <laughs> After fire, what are you proposing? So he never trust me, but I didn't give up. I started commuting the Kobe. And I met the, the society of the Vietnamese people. They are living like this, with a very poor plastic sheet in the park. So I proposed to rebuild. I do the fundraising. I made a paper tube shelter for them. And in order to make easy to be built by students and also easy to demolish, I used the beer crates uh, as a foundation. I asked the killing beer company to propose because at that time the uh, Asahi beer company makes their plastic beer crate red, which doesn't go with the color of the paper tube. The color coordination is very important. And uh, also, I still remember we are expecting to have a beer inside of the plastic beer crate, but it came with empty. So I still remember it was so disappointing. So during the summer with my student, we built over 50 units of the shelters. Finally, please, finally trust me to rebuild. He said, as long as you collect money by yourself, bring a student to build, it, it can do it. So we spent five weeks to rebuild the church. It was meant to be stay there for three years, but actually it stayed there 10 years because people loved it. Then uh, the, the, in Taiwan, they had a big earthquake, and uh, the, I was, we are proposed to donate this church. So we dismantled them, we sent over to build by volunteer people. It stayed there in Taiwan as a permanent church, even now. So this building became a permanent building. Then I wonder, what is a permanent and what is a temporary building? Even the building made in paper can be permanent as long as people have it. Even concrete building can be very temporary if that is made to make money. And 1999, in Turkey, the big earthquake, I went to there to use the local material to build the, uh, the shelter. 2001, in West India, I built also shelter. In 2004, in Sri Lanka, after the Sumatra earthquake tsunami, I rebuilt uh, Islamic fisherman's village. And 2008, in uh, uh, Chandu, Shishawan area in China, over nearly 70,000 people killed. And also, especially the many of school, destroyed because of the collapse between the authority and the contractor. I was asked to rebuild the temporary church. I brought my Japanese student to work with the Chinese student. In one month, we completed nine classrooms over 500 square meters. It's still used even after the current earthquake in China. In 2009, in Italy, L'Aquila, uh, also they had a big earthquake, and there's a very interesting photo. Uh, former Prime Minister Berlusconi and uh, Japanese former, 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 former Prime Minister Mr. Aso. You know, because we have to, we have to change the Prime Minister every year, so that the, 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 the and they are very kind, the forwarding my model. I propose the big rebuilding the uh, temporary, cassette, uh, temporary music hall because the Rakuira is very famous for music and all the concert halls were destroyed, so musician was moving out. So I proposed to the mayor, I like to rebuild the temporary auditorium. He said, as long as you bring your money, you can do it. And I was very lucky. Mr. Berlusconi brought G8 Summit, and the, the, our former prime minister came. So they helped us to uh, collect the money. And I got a half million dollar, euro from the Japanese government to rebuild this temporary uh, auditorium. Year 2010 in Haiti. Uh, there are big earthquake, but uh, it's impossible to fly over. So I went to Santo Domingo, next to our country, to drive six hours to get the Haichi with the local student in Santo Domingo to build 50 units of the shelter out of local paper tube. This is what happened in Japan two years ago in northern Japan. After the earthquake and tsunami, people have to be evacuated in the big roof like a gymnasium. But look at this, it's no privacy. People suffer mentally and physically. So we went to there to build the partitions with all the student volunteers with paper tube, just a very simple shelter uh, out of tube frame and the curtain. However, some of the facility authority doesn't want us to do it because they said simply it's become more difficult to control them. But the, it's really necessary to do it. They don't have enough flat area to build standard government single-story housing like this one. Look at this, even still government is doing such a poor construction of the, the temporary housing, so dense, 
and it's so messy because it's, there's no storage and nothing, and the water is leaking. So I thought we have to make multi-story building because there's no land, and also it's not very comfortable. So I proposed to the uh, mayor while I was uh, making petitions. Finally, I met a very good, nice mayor in Onagawa uh, village in Miyagi. Uh, he asked me to build three-story uh, housing in baseball ground. I used uh, the uh, shipping container and also the, the student helped us to make all the buildings, uh, the, the furniture to make them comfortable within the budget of the government, but also the, uh, the area of the house is exactly the same, but much more comfortable. Many of the people want to stay here forever, but are uh, very happy to hear that. Now uh, I'm working in, uh, in New Zealand, Christchurch. About 20 days before a uh, Japanese earthquake happened, also they have big earthquake, and many of Japanese students were also killed. And the most important cathedral of the city, symbol of the Christ Church, was totally destroyed. And I was asked to come to rebuild the temporary cathedral. So this is under construction, and I like to keep building the monument that be loved by people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.